In this lesson, we'll discuss the steps to install a fuel level sensor. The vehicle must be parked on a level ground, that is, on a non-inclined surface. Before we begin sensor installation, we must prepare the fuel tank. Remember to comply with all safety regulations while handling fuel. Let us first drain the residual fuel from the fuel tank. Draining fuel requires the following a fuel pump, a fuel nozzle, flow type fuel meter, intermediary tank of at least the same volume as that of the vehicle involved. We also need a fuel filter and a container for calibrating the flow type fuel meter. Now, use the pump to transfer all the fuel from the original tank to the intermediary tank. When working with petroleum fuel, remember to remove any vapors by steaming the tank or filling it up with water after you've emptied it. Then, examine the tank on the inside in order to pick the most suitable location for the fuel level sensor. You need to make sure that the sensor will not end up too close to the fuel tank's existing float sensor. The optimal spot for a typical tank is its geometric center, right as the image here shows. This way, you will minimize the effect of the fuel level fluctuations in the tank on the sensor readings. The opening where the sensor will eventually be installed is drilled with a drill bit of 35 mm diameter. Make sure you drill accurately and at a slight angle. This will help prevent any metal shavings from getting into the tank. While you're drilling, continue removing any metal shavings from inside the tank and double-check for those once you're done drilling the opening. The last preparation step involves measuring the depth of the tank. You should measure the depth exactly where the sensor will be located. As you proceed to select the sensor length for the given tank, don't forget that dirt and water built up in the bottom of the tank. Therefore, the fuel level sensor must not touch the bottom of the tank directly. Omnicom recommends leaving a gap of around 10 or 20 mm between the tank bottom and the sensor cutoff end. Cutting off the sensor is rather simple, and the choice of tools available to perform the task is extensive. The easiest to use and the most popular is the metal hand hacksaw. Once you've cut the sensor body to suit your tank specs, make sure you finish off the cut end with a file, nice and accurate, to get rid of any possible uneven areas. Another minor step of sensor preparation is the installation of the end cap. It will protect the cutoff end from contact with dirt and water from the bottom of the tank. Before installing the end cap, fill it up with oil and petroleum-resistant silicone, 10% approximately. Now, fix the end cap of the sensor's cutoff end. But don't push too hard, as it may cause the silicone to leak. We're on to the next stage. Preparing the equipment for sensor and fuel tank calibration. Get the Omnicom UNU USB adapter. Connect the sensor interface cable and the computer USB connection cable. And then connect the whole system to the computer with a pre-installed Omnicom configurator. Take the calibration pipe closed at one end and fill it up completely with fuel that your vehicle uses to run on. The length of the pipe must be at least of the same length as the sensor. Insert the sensor tube into the calibration pipe and refer to the Omnicom configurator. The interface will display the rising level of fuel, which will at some point stabilize at a specific value.
Record the value by clicking on Full and then save this value into the sensor. You can now see that it reads it as a 100% level. Remove the sensor from the calibration pipe and allow the remaining drops of fuel to drip down. Refer to the Omnicom configurator to view how the level falls and once it stabilizes, click on Empty. Save the value you've got into the sensor. We've now got to the step when we'll be selecting the right accessories to mount the sensor and install it in the fuel tank. Take the rubber liner from the sensor kit and apply silicone on one of its sides in a circle. Then, put the liner on the sensor, silicone side to the flange. Now, apply the sealant to the other side of the liner. Install the sensor in the fuel tank and mount it in the manner chosen earlier. Before performing the tank calibration, check the accuracy of the flow type meter by introducing some fuel into the measurement container. Reconfigure the meter if required. Now, let's get to the tank calibration at last. With each calibration step, introduce a certain amount of fuel into the tank and record the values in the Omnicom configurator. With every subsequent fuel top-up, wait for the level to stabilize and then record it. Only then, should you introduce the next portion of fuel. Once the fuel tank is 100% full, the calibration process is complete. Export the calibration table you've thus generated into a file. In this lesson, we've looked at all the stages of installing a fuel level sensor, from examining the fuel tank to generating a comprehensive calibration table. The whole process of installing and configuring the sensor for one tank of a given vehicle usually takes up two hours at most.